Welcome to episode 101 of Sport SA Daily Diary. Today we're chatting to South African motor racing driver, Tasman Pepper. Afternoon, Tasman. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, very good, thank you. Getting a bit tired of uh, no proper sport being available to do and, and play. I mean, you must be going out of your mind not being able to get in the car. Yeah, it is very frustrating. Um, hoping to go karting this weekend coming, so that's at least something that we, we can do. Um, but yeah, it's frustrating that our racing season has been cancelled and all we're doing at the moment is esports. sports and um, yeah, I'm missing being at the racetrack a lot. Sure. You've been at the racetrack since you were tiny. Um, when did you first go? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was at the racetrack from two weeks old with my parents while my dad raced. So um, my mom and I tagged along to all the events. And yeah, I mean, I've been at the racetrack my whole, my entire life. I think this is the longest time I've actually spent away from the racetrack. And it's not because I've given up or anything like that. It's simply because we, we're forced not to be there. And um, yeah, so I'm missing it a lot. And hopefully things start changing soon. But yeah, like I said, we, we've been involved very long and I started racing at the, the age of the year I turned five. So I've been involved now for 25 years. <laughs> I've been racing. So yeah, it's a really long time. And um, Tasman, tell us about the little pink go-kart that got you first interested in uh, being behind the wheel. Yeah, actually it was Tanith Gardner. So I mean, ladies in motorsports is very unheard of, especially back then, um, 1994 or 1995. So I remember standing on the side waiting with my dad while he was racing and saw this pink go-kart and it actually turned out it was one of my dad's good friends, Roy Gardner, and it was his daughter who was racing. And she was actually the only female at that point also, also driving and she was really competitive and really fast. And it was something that I, I wanted to do. I mean, I was only, I was still small, so it wasn't like, you know, let's give it a try and, and go all out for it, you know. And my dad went um, to collect his cart from one of his, uh, the guys who was fixing it. And there was two baby carts lying there and asked my dad to, to get us one. And he bought both of them for myself and my cousin. And that's how we began. I mean, he, he took us to the Hyperama parking lot and taught us how to brake and how to accelerate. And <laughs> then uh, that's where it all began. And that's how we all started. And when did you start racing from there? Yeah, I mean, we started, so that was the year turn four. And sometime during that time, we, there obviously wasn't a category for 50 cc's at that point. Um, I think the youngest category there was, was from eight years old and up, which was GP juniors back in the day. And um, yeah, I mean, we started and a whole bunch of little kids obviously got involved and the parents got involved and got a lot of 50 cc carts and the year I turned five was in 1995 was when there was a class for all of us and that's where we started racing. I mean, I can't exactly tell you what it was like to the first race I ever participated in because I don't remember. <laughs> um, and I just, my dad used to tell me, he's told me stories about how I always wanted to go to the racetrack and I was always keen and he used to pack up a cart and We'd go from Edenvale all the way to Frenichen. It took an hour to get there and I'd get there and I'd be, <laughs> I just want to ride my bicycle, you know, with my friends. And that's how, it was. <laughs> that's how it always was. And, you know, he never ever pushed, he never ever pushed me to, to do something that I didn't want to do. And if he took me all the way to the racetrack and all I wanted to do was ride my bike, he, he let me do that, you know, and he, he sort of concentrated on my little cousin, uh, well, my cousin, same age as me. He concentrated on him because he sort of, wanted to put in the effort and the time and um, yeah he just let me do my thing and when I started paying more attention and actually wanted to do something and make something of it he he sort of focused his attention back on me and from there we started being really competitive and yeah I mean we raced from 50 cc's GP juniors 80 cc's into one to fives and then at the age of 15 progress into um, main circuit racing. And um, have you never been afraid, sort of afraid of crashing? I presume at that age you, you must have hit the tires quite a few times. Has it never been anything that's really concerned you? Um, to be honest with you, I mean, you, you're always scared. You're always scared of crashing. I mean, it, it is a fear. 
But if you want to be competitive, it's something that you don't want to think about during a race, because if it is something you're thinking about all the time, it is going to happen more often and you're not going to want to, you're not going to want to participate. So yeah, I mean, I had plenty crashes. I've hit plenty walls, um, in karting, I broke my arm. So like I used to get bullied a lot on track. Uh, by all the guys and eventually I mean I went to my first world championship events and like my dad said when we got back from that event I was a changed driver you know I started fighting back and the guys weren't able to beat me around as much as they did um, in the earlier stages of, our, of our, my racing career so um, I became a lot more competitive not that I wasn't before but I became more fight like I fought more for my positions and I didn't let them box me around as much as I did before and yeah I mean from there I just I realized that this is something that I really want to pursue and um, if I didn't start giving back what I was given I was I was always going to be pushed around so it was kind of it was a big learning curve but the best learning curve that I could have gone through and it it brought me everything from there into my career and got me to the position that I am currently in. Um, you, you talk about being bullied by the guys. Were they more specifically giving you attention because you were a girl and you were holding your own against them? Or did they all sort of have a go at each other? Yeah, not to say that they didn't bully each other. Um, it was almost like they would show their cards and I would back out of a situation, you know, so I wouldn't challenge them on the situation. So they would, they would almost get away with a move with me rather than with one of the other guys because the guys weren't scared or they weren't whatever it was at that time, you know. And eventually, like I said, I learned to fight back. So if they overtook me unnecessary into a corner and sort of pushed me off the track, the next move, I would do the exact same thing back to them. And once I started doing that, I think I earned a lot more respect from them. And um, they started doing it less and less and less because they knew when they did it to me, they were going to have it straight back, you know. So I wouldn't say just because I was a female that they, they had a go, but they knew, they kind of knew that they could get away with it with me more because I just kind of allowed it to happen and I just got on with it and I carried on with my race. But it didn't make me less competitive, but. Um, yeah, I think once you earn that respect from those drivers, um, it makes your racing a little bit easier. And Tasman, your dad grew up, his first love was two wheels. Did you never have a, a sort of desire to, to be on the bikes? Well, actually, my dad first, the first thing he ever bought me, it was actually before I was born. I think he was hoping I was going to be a boy. <laughs> um, but he bought a, a little peewee. And um, he actually used to ride with me around the, the garden with it. Um, and apparently, I don't remember it, but I sort of wanted to start, start motocross. And uh, it was something that I went to my dad and be like, okay, yeah, this is what, something that I want to do. And my mom was like, no chance is she going to ride back. So that was the end of it. And it wasn't even a, a discussion. And I think that's how we got more involved in the karting scene. Um, and yeah, like I'm surprised my mom actually allowed that too <laughs> uh, at that time. And um, yeah, I mean, from there, so I, I do love motocross and I do love all the off-road stuff. But from, from that age, it wasn't something we did. Um, the only thing I remember is riding around with my dad on his bikes. And um, yeah, I, still to this day, I, I'm yet to ride any motocross bike and I, I'd rather stick to four wheels. It's a lot safer. <laughs> And I mean, growing up at school, obviously, um, motorsports is not something that's offered at school. Um, were you playing other mainstream sports as well? Or was it just every afternoon, I'm going to get to the track and get behind a wheel? Yeah, no, it wasn't just that. I mean, um, school was very important. And my mom laid that rule down very early. Um, my dad was just as strict with our school as, as anything else. So uh, I, com like I basically competed in every school sport that there was, uh, running, athletics, um, swimming, netball, hockey. So school sports were very, very important to me and something that I really enjoyed doing. So that was sort of my Monday to Fridays and on weekends we would go racing. So 
when the racing obviously started getting a little bit more competitive and we started putting a lot more time in it, um, we would be away from school on a Friday because practice would partake on a Friday because the race would be on a, on a Saturday. So I started missing a lot more events at school sports, but it didn't stop me from being in the teams. And when I could participate in, in, in events, I, I did. Um, but then obviously when we started focusing more on the racing, the racing took importance over the school sports. So I missed a lot of Saturday school sports events and stuff, but <laughs> it didn't really bug me because I was at the racetrack and I was doing something that I really enjoyed doing and I was with my friends from the track. So it, it wasn't, didn't really bug me, but yeah, it didn't take me away from involving myself in school sports. And um, your younger brother also found a love for, um, for the cars, uh, Jordan. Was there much competitiveness between the two of you growing up uh, in terms of karting or, or being in the cars or sort of vying for dad's attention in terms of, of racing? Um, my dad was actually very good like that. He gave us equal amount of attention when we got to the track and Jordan's six years younger than me. So we never were in the same category. So we were always on the sidelines supporting one another, him shouting for me and me shouting for him kind of deal. And um, I think as we got older, it was, I think we've always been competitive. We don't only competitive on the racetrack. We're competitive with each other with everything. Um, it's quite frustrating because my brother's good at everything. So <laughs> he beats me with majority of the things that we do. But I think that kept our competitive spirit in play. Um, but I mean, we've always supported each other on the sidelines and behind the scenes with regards to our racing careers and um, I think it only pushed us and helped us um, get to those further points. And I mean, we spoke about it before with my brother and, you know, they sort of learned more from me making the mistakes that we made with my career going forward over, uh, internationally. And they kind of took a different route. So you kind of get to a point where you've got to take a step back and give the younger sibling a chance to go for it. And that's what happened. And um, yeah, I mean, he's made a really good name for himself and he's done really well and he's really good at what he does. And uh, yeah, he'll always have my 100% support. I think you're being uh, slightly modest there. It's, it's not as if you haven't achieved in, in your own right. Uh, I mean, you're the, the first woman and I think still the only woman to win uh, a national championship race in South Africa. That's pretty... Yeah, pretty I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's like... I haven't won any national championships to say like, but I've won and competed in lots of championship events. And I've won, I think I was the first female to win um, on a national circuit, like you say, in a national championship. And yeah, I mean, that's quite special, uh, especially since no one had done it prior. And um, I think that was in Formula Volkswagen and there's been a few races since then. And I, I, like, I like giving the boys trouble and I like being competitive and, I've, I don't know, it's, I've kind of always been competitive from early stages in karting and as we progressed up. So it's not to say that I'm only racing against guys or I'm racing against goals. Um, it's just, yeah, I mean, it's something that I've always enjoyed doing and I've been fortunate enough to do it and my parents allowed and, you know, paid our way to do it and put and sacrificed a lot of things to allow us to, to do the things that we've done. Um, and yeah, we've enjoyed every every little moment up until this point. And uh, Tasman, 2006, 2007, you, you raced in Formula Ford, 2008 Formula BMW, uh, 2009 to 2012 Formula V, and then 13 to 18 is was VW. Which of those different categories did you prefer the most? Um, yo, so the Formula Fords actually I didn't enjoy at all. I don't know if I was, I think it, it, it was kind of, it was a big step from karting into something that was really competitive um, in the early stages or in during that time. And um, so it was something that I like, I felt out of my depth, you know, I was this tiny, like 15 year old going into main circuit racing, racing against these 20 odd year old guys. And, um, it wasn't guys that I'd been competing with my entire life and karting, you know? So it was kind of just throwing yourself in the deep end, but learning. I actually 
strangely enough, wanted to give up racing after my first year of Formula Four. So I kind of got to a point where I was like, Dad, I don't think I can do this. Can't we go back to karting, you know? And um, so it was kind of, we, we pushed through that and we put in a lot of effort to get fast and to get competitive. And from there, it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot of um, a different driving style and different racing techniques and, you know, once you start getting competitive, you, you obviously, you want to, you want to do it more. And then I stepped over into Formula BMW, which was sort of the same thing, single seater, but with wings. And um, it had a lot more downforce and a little bit nicer to drive. Um, or it suited my driving style a little bit more. But we had to come back to South Africa and we had to, you know, couldn't carry on doing that simply because we just couldn't afford it. Um, Formula Volkswagen was actually really fun and really enjoyable. Um, it didn't have as much downforce as the Formula BMW, but it was really quick and actually the fastest thing around um, national circuit racing at that time. So uh, it was it was actually really cool to be involved in something like that. And eventually the season started dying down and there wasn't as much interest and we were only like really racing against eight guys and it was just like the racing wasn't as competitive at that time um and it was like almost like when you pulled off of the grid and from your qualifying position that was where it where it ended so you're always doing like practice laps and i think that's because the cars didn't offer enough downforce at that time so it didn't allow for closer racing um Polar Cup was probably the most fun I've ever had. <laughs> um, it was extremely competitive. One of the hardest cars I've ever had to learn to drive. Um, my dad always says it's, it's almost like a pogo stick on wheels. So uh, really hard to drive, but a lot of fun and really, really competitive. And it was almost something that I could compare to karting. It was that close. Um, competition was always really good. And Straight away, I, I gelled in it and it suited my driving style. So it was something that I really enjoyed. And also like the fact that I had a roll cage around me to protect me if, if something happened. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's probably the, the thing I enjoyed the most and something that I was actually really good at doing. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I raced F3 last year, which is an unbelievable experience and something I'll never, ever forget. Uh, but really, really difficult, and it kind of threw me back in the deep end again, you know. So coming from something that I gelled so well with for six years, and stepping into something completely in the opposite direction, um, another new challenge, another back into the international scene, and having to learn new things again, and you know, like back out of your comfort zone. So it was a big, big learning experience, but. Towards the end of the year, I started getting a lot more comfortable and started that the challenge wasn't as challenging. You know, it wasn't, it was always challenging going from race to race, but I kind of started gelling and started getting more comfortable in the, in the, in the space. And I started enjoying it more because I was getting a little bit closer to the front end of the field. I mean, every racing driver doesn't want to be at the back when you, you know, majority of your racing career, you've been in the front. So it's very hard and, and it's, it's hard to like deal with those emotions and go through that. But at the same time, um, it pushes you to do something even greater, you know, and in racing, if you don't have those challenges, um, there's nothing to push you to go further in your racing career. You talk about being at the front. Um, 2016 and 2018, you came second in the championship. I mean, that's that's not bad going. Seeing you racing against majority men, and probably you know they're thinking, okay, here comes little Tasman. We're just going <laughs> to drive all over. I mean, that's that's putting a, putting your name out there. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I've been competitive, and and the guys that I've been racing against, a lot of them I'd I'd raced against from karting days. So it's not like they didn't know that. I'm fast or I can win or anything like that. And um, I, like my dad always said, he was always runner up. <laughs> and I seem to have got the same from him. So we, we don't seem to ever get that final podium position at the top. But, you know, 
I won the Masters Championship at the age of 28. Apparently, I'm a master. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, finishing second in the championship, considering the, the year that I had, it was really, really good. But it could have been better. Um, so it was quite disappointing, like from that side, but also the fact that I'm able to compete and be at the top of the field is kind of like a feather in my own cap, um, considering I am one of the only girls that are, are competing in that category and, and I'm able to be at the front end of the pack. So, I mean, like I said, um, Polar Cup is probably the one of the most challenging uh, series you can be in. It's so competitive. The times are really, really close. And I mean, the guys are, they're always giving it 110% and they fight hard. So you've got to be able to fight hard back. And I think that taught me a lot of racecraft through those six years. And um, yeah, I mean, you, you look back on, your, on what you've done and how it's progressed you further forward. And without all those different things that you've gone through, you never ever become the driver that you currently are. So it's taught me a lot. Karting days taught me a lot. Um, Polo Cup taught me a lot. And now I'm, I'm currently doing something completely new and completely new and challenging and I'm enjoying it and I'm, I'm enjoying being back on that international scene and I'm, I'm hoping we get a chance to go back again next year. <laughs> Just talking about being back on the sort of international scene, it's obviously the W Series so it's, it's women only. Is there a difference between a race purely of, of women and race where you know, majority guys and you're kind of the only woman? And what are the, the women like towards each other out of the car? Is there, are they sort of close with each other or is there a bit of bitchiness and, you know, <laughs> that sort of girl rivalry? Sorry, I think you froze there for a minute. Um, so everyone keeps asking us the same question because <laughs> obviously everyone knows guy, uh, girls can be bitchy. Um, and, but the funny thing is we actually all get on really well. And I think it's because we've all come from the same scene. So we've all come from the same background. We've only ever raced against guys and the odd girl here and there. Um, so it's kind of like we're all in the same boat and we've kind of all fought the same ladder to get to where we are in our current um, level of our careers. And so everyone gels really well behind, um, outside the cars and we fight just as hard on track. So to be honest with you, these are the fastest, most competitive, I wouldn't even say they're females, you know, just competitors that I've ever raced against. Um, they're really quick. They, they know what they want and what they're going for. And, you know, it, it's a respect level on a different level, if that makes sense. It's just, they kind of, you come from the same, the same roots and you, you both, you all know where you want to be eventually in your racing careers. And, you kind of fought that ladder all together. Um, but yeah, they, they're really fast. And uh, <laughs> you know, everyone everyone said when before I went over that, like, oh Taz, this will be easy. You're racing against girls, it can't be that difficult. Okay. It's like you've been competing against guys and beating the guys. <laughs> so I mean you got this, you got this in the bag, but yeah, they are they they're really quick and um, you know, they're very helpful. Um, a lot of the girls come from single seaters and we're currently driving single seaters at the time, so they stepped in and, and they were all they were up there straight away. You know where I slowly progressed to that point towards the end of the year, um, but everyone's helpful and it's 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 nice because it's almost like we all trying to do and achieve the same thing, and that's to become professional athletes or professional racing drivers. Um, not because we're girls and not because we're guys. We just want to be taken as seriously as every other guy in, in the field is taken. And do you guys feel that you do get taken seriously or is it still, there's still a bit more to go? I think it's, we're starting, I think they're starting to take more notice. Um, at first, I didn't even know there were that many females racing in the world, to be honest with you. Um, we're kind of in our own little bubble here in South Africa and I've competed against other females in karting and stuff, but it, it was never a massive amount. I mean, there was one or two on the grid and a grid of 68 competitors, you know, so they are fair and fair between, but I feel like they are, we are making more of a stand in motorsports and 
W Series is pushing that and has helped it a lot. I think just from last year's championship, I think it's opened a lot of people's eyes. And I think people are going to start taking more females in motorsport more seriously. And we've already started noticing more female um, teams happening and uh, racing drivers participating in, in your Nürburgring 24 hour as all female team. And, you know, I think a lot more are getting noticed and picked up and taken more seriously. Uh, and I think it's still, there's still a long way to go, but, you know, I think the starting point is, is massive and I think it can only get better from here on out. And Tasman, there's always been a Formula One dream. Um, you were due to test a Formula One car this year in South Africa, but yeah. COVID bloody screwed that up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, firstly, I mean, that must have been a, a great feather in your cap that you've been noticed by a Formula One team uh, and that they, they're wanting you to test their car. Is that dream still alive? To get to Formula One, I don't think it's ever going to be possible. Um, I'm like I said, I was I'm 30 years old now, so the guys that are in Formula One are at the top of their level, and they are really, really good. And they've come from karting and they've moved up, and I mean they're 21 years old. Um, so the chances of getting to Formula One is I don't think is realistic dream to have right now. Um, I'd like to get to GT racing and, and compete like my brother is currently. And I think that's a more realistic goal to, to go towards right now. Um, and I think it has a more of a, a longer term, I don't know, factor um, that I can look towards that, that will go further on in my career. But, you know, getting the, getting that, that phone call to, to be able to drive a formula one car. Yes. It's not the current car, but, like, what are the chances of a Formula One team contacting you to, to drive their car around one of your current racetracks? I mean, there's a lot of guys who, who race single-seaters here in South Africa. Um, but for them to, to call up on me and, and ask me to do it, I think it is quite a nice feather in my cap and something I was looking so forward to. I'm not going to lie, I was pretty scared for it <laughs> because, uh, I mean, it's a Formula One car, right? But I think, yeah, I think just... Just taking notice of what W Series has given us, um, given me a lot, like I said, a lot more people are taking notice and clearly it's working and it's working in the right way. And hopefully soon we're going to see a female in, in Formula One. I don't think it's a long way away, um, but I don't think that person's going to be me. <laughs> oh, you never know. You never know. Um, Tasman, when you get out of your car on the track and you get into your car to drive home or whatever, do you drive it the same way as you drive your car on the track? No, <laughs> no, um, I'm very, I'm very, I'm not a slow driver on, on the road, but I'm not, I abide by the rules as much as possible. And, you know, on the road, I sort of take it as you got to kind of drive for the people around you because a lot of them aren't taking notice or paying too much attention to what's going on. So I feel like you kind of got to concentrate more for everyone around you rather than yourself. Um, it's fine for me to go 160, 180 or whatever it is, but it's the people around you that you got to, you got to pay more attention to. So I, I seem to be quite law abiding when it comes to the road, but, um, yeah, I mean, I get the chance to race and go fast on the racetrack. So there's no reason to, to race on the roads as well. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do get quite frustrated <laughs> on the roads, um, as one would. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm pretty I'm pretty good when it comes to road driving versus uh, racetrack driving. I can only imagine going around a track at a million miles an hour and then having to drive in traffic at 30. It must yeah. kill you. It's frustrating. Um, so just in closing, um, what is the fastest you've ever driven a car? And what is the highlight of your career the moment that you look back and think cheapest that was that was pretty impressive i can't believe i actually did that um so i think the fastest i've ever like noted would be the formula volkswagen in east london around a corner actually 268 kilometers an hour um so yeah it was a really quick car that we we competed with and um, so i think that would be something that i've noted i haven't really noted higher speeds than that um and then i think 
Yeah, well, it's hard to pinpoint one specific highlight because, I mean, like I said, I've been really fortunate enough to do so much in these last 25 years. Um, so I think one really, something that really like, stands out would be well, racing, being one of the first people on the Singapore Grand Prix track um, when I raced Formula BMW. We competed on the same weekend as Formula One and it was the first ever, ever year that the Singapore Grand Prix happened. So that would be one of them and receiving my South African colors is another. And yeah, I mean, I've had lots, a lot of highlights in karting and lots of other highlights in, in my current national championships here in South Africa. But I think there's still a lot more um, highlights to come and W Series is definitely on top of the list. Um, I mean, the tracks that I got to drive on last year were incredible and um, we were meant to compete at Formula One this year, which would have been really cool. And yeah, hopefully we get that opportunity again next year. Uh, just one more. If you had to race your brother, do you think you'd beat him? <laughs> yeah, so my brother and I, yeah, like I said, we're very competitive. Um, I think, I don't know if I'd be able to beat him, but I think we would match one another and it would be kind of what came down to what car we were driving and in what conditions we were driving in. Um, but yeah, like, like we said, we, we haven't really competed against each other ever because of our age difference and where we currently are. I'm now in single seaters and he's in GT racing. So hopefully one day I'll get to compete against him and you never know, I might be able to beat him. Um, but yeah, like I said, um, my brother's really talented and he's really good and We've been lucky to have my dad as our support and, and uh, the guy who's taught us everything we know. Um, and so, yeah, so if we compete against each other, it's, it's juice my dad. <laughs> and um, I think he kind of gave us equal um, talent, talent pieces in that department. But you never know. You never know uh, what it could happen or it couldn't happen. And I don't know who would beat who, but I... If I could say myself, I would, but you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to be that person. <laughs> oh, you never know. And maybe we will see you guys uh, in a car together. Um, Desmond, it's been great chatting to you today on Sport Desert Daily Diary. Thank you for your time. We look forward to seeing you in the W Series again, I presume, next year. Um, and usually you're sort of hitting the, the top, maybe the podium. Yeah, that's that's the aim. Um, that was the aim for this year, but COVID-19 happened. So, yeah, I'm hoping to compete again next year and we'll definitely fight for that podium position. Good luck with that. Take care. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. In a new week of Sport SA Daily Diary, we'll be focusing on young up-and-coming South African sportswomen, starting with under-17 football captain Jessica Wade.